Welcome to the Adobe Minute. Hello and welcome back to the Adobe Minute. This video brought to you by Dialoplate.org, the automotive phone book. There's this pretty well-known quote that gets thrown around a lot and it's often attributed to Albert Einstein. The quote goes, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Now, whether or not Einstein said that or not isn't really all that important because the quote itself is quite true. Now, of course, some things just can't be explained simply and so on, but generally it's a true statement. Think of something that you're really good at and ask yourself how easily you could explain that to someone else. Like say, tying your shoe for example. A minute or two and boom, you've taught someone else this concept that could be seen as somewhat complex by a person who had never seen it before. So in general, this saying is valid, but what's really the concept here? I would say that the saying is referring to is that if you know something well enough to teach it to someone else, you have pretty well mastered the concept or at least you have learned it well enough to get what you need from it. This tells us that if we want to learn something, perhaps we should approach it as though we were going to teach it to others. Now, as a technical trainer, which I sometimes am on a part-time, full-time, maybe basis, I am pretty well versed at learning new things. I often say that trainers have to become experts at becoming experts. And yeah, it's a bit goofy, but it makes sense when you really think about that. But beyond that, we have to get really good at something that we don't know anything about on a regular basis as trainers. Um, now many folks think that uh, trainers um, are automatically just experts on something, and in many cases that's true. For example, in the military, a sharpshooting or a sniping trainer is almost always a sniper or a sharpshooter themselves. A martial arts trainer is almost always a black belt or whatever the top rank is in that art and so on. In corporate America and in adult learning, uh, it's not always the case, and more often than not, the trainer is not an expert on that subject, they're just an expert at being a trainer, which, in translation, goes back to my saying, which is we have to become experts at becoming experts. Um, but as trainers, we work with subject matter experts who are the real experts, and we get that knowledge from them that we need to train and then we organize it etc and then of course we deliver that training um, so we learn by teaching or at least by preparing to teach by preparing the lessons that we have learned so if you want to be really good at learning something uh, and learning things quickly and well enough to say pass a test or well enough to use this newfound knowledge then perhaps you should study it as though you were going to teach the subject. If you prepare a well-planned lesson on any subject, then you should well know that material. If you look at teaching techniques or learning techniques like the uh, Feynman technique, it's a very similar to the model that I'm suggesting here. Now, the Feynman technique is a very uh, straightforward and uh, simple granular technique uh, as to where what I'm suggesting is more of a general approach than a technique. But if you use this as a general rule and then define or create your own techniques within it, I think you'll have a great deal of success in not only learning new information quickly and easily, but also being able to explain and teach it to others as well. Why? Why is that? Well, in my opinion, I think that we, when we learn, we just see a large open expanse of data and it's very passive. Uh, we see that all this tons of information and there's really not any real rhyme or reason to it. Um, learning is often uh, very unstructured and we kind of absorb information uh, that comes to us when and where we can. Teaching, on the other hand, is pretty organized. As a matter of fact, it should be very organized, very linear, very structured. So when we shift gears mentally from learning to teaching, we then organize what we need to learn. And that, I think, is the key. Learning is passive, unfortunately. Teaching is aggressive. 
Now, here's a little mental exercise that I think will illustrate this for us. Um, I'm going to say a sentence. Uh, I'll say two sentences, and after each, just think about how it makes you feel. Now, imagine that you're really going to have to do what I say in these sentences. Imagine that this is real and that it will happen. So, sentence one. Tomorrow, you will attend a one-hour class about cats. How does that make you feel? The sentence two. Tomorrow, you will teach a one-hour class about cats. How does that make you feel? So if you're like most people, when I said that you're going to have to teach, you probably felt nervous because you knew you would have to do something. You would have to teach others about something that you probably know very little about. Even if you know some things about cats, uh, do you know enough to fill an hour? Do you know all the things that someone uh, should know about cats? Is there basic information that anyone who wants to be a cat expert should know that you aren't aware of? Uh, so on and so forth. You see where I'm going here. And that is that learning just means you have to show up. As to where teaching means you are going to probably spend the rest of today and probably tonight learning everything you can about cats. Memorizing as much as you can and hoping that you don't sound uh, and look like a complete fool in front of this class tomorrow. So teaching is active, it's aggressive, it's an action word. Uh, learning, eh, not so much. But in both cases, you will be learning, whether you attend or whether you teach. But in which case do you think you will learn and retain more? Thanks for watching. This has been the Adobe Minute. Hey, this is Mike with the Adobe Minute. Hope you enjoyed the show.